Okay, now it's time for some arithmetic sequences. I think it first would help to just explain to you what a sequence even means. So a sequence is actually just, it's just a list of numbers. That's all it is. It's just a list okay, of numbers. Now that list of numbers might have a pattern. Maybe it doesn't. Okay, it sort of, it all depends. So a sequence is a very generic thing. Okay, just a list. Here, for example, here's two different lists. This one right here, if we look at this list of numbers, 2, 5, negative 2, 8, 3. Can you find the pattern? Hopefully not, because there's not meant to be one at least. There's no pattern. So this is actually this is actually pretty boring, right? So this is not a this is not a special kind of sequence. It's just a generic sequence. That's kind of boring. Let's see this one here. 2, 5, 8, 11. Can you find the pattern here? Here there is a pattern. Can you see it? Between 2 and 5, you think about it, you have to add 3, don't you? To get to from 2 plus 3 gives you 5. 5 plus 3 gives you 8, right? 8 plus 3 gives you 11. If that's the case, can you guess the next number then? You don't have to be a math genius to figure that out. 11, let's see, 12, 13, 14, and so on. This pattern would continue forever. That's why we put the dot, dot, dots. So this one right here, we do have a pattern. The pattern is, you know, there's a common, oh, actually, I'll just say here, here's the pattern. The pattern is uh, add 3. Well, this is actually an example of something that is arithmetic. So something that is arithmetic, okay, then, then now we know the pattern. The pattern is you add the same amount. So maybe that's one way we can define an arithmetic sequence. We can say um, it always has a common difference. Now we're going to define the difference. We're going to call it common difference. We're going to call it D. So you're always going to add the same number. Keep in mind D can be negative. You can add a negative number if you want it. So we're going to define it this way, okay? So uh, arithmetic means it has a common difference. We're also going to define it based on uh, what we call the first term. That's also going to be important. The first term is going to be called u1. The u is just going to determine any term. So u1 would be the first term. In this case, u1 would be 2. Uh, u2, for example, that would represent the second term. Well, that would be 5 in this case, and so on. So we're going to characterize these things here, these things called arithmetic sequences, based on this, based on two features, the common difference and the first term. Now, um, I have a meme that actually I think is so good. It is so good. It's perfect for this. So watch this. Here we go. So a math break. Look at this number. It's 1, 3, 5, 7. Now, without looking at this one right here, just wait. Let me see here. If we had the list 1, 3, 5, 7, let's take a look at that one. Okay. 1, 3, 5, 7. You would think it's arithmetic, wouldn't you? With a common difference of 2. So you think, oh, then the next number then must be 9, right? And here what I like is they're really playing with this to saying, nope. <laughs> Look, because keep in mind, it's because we're assuming it was arithmetic. Here someone just went a little bit crazy. They said, no, it's 2, 1, 7, 3, 4, 1, because and here's the equation that they gave. Um, and I've actually gone so far as to actually go a little bit crazy. I've actually done it on my calculator. So let me show you this. I love doing this stuff. This stuff makes me really happy. Um, whoops, why am I over there? So what I'm going to do now is actually show you, I don't know why it is that it's not uh, giving me all these. Um, what I've done is I've actually put in this equation right here as F1. Uh, you can see it right here. Here's the graph. Now, if I want to find out what happens when I put in the first term, like what's the first term? Remember, this means the second term, the third term, the fourth term. If I put in this equation right here, let's see what I get. So I'm going to do menu. I'm going to do trace. Um, let me just put in, I want when X equals one, what do I get? I get y equals 1. Okay, good. So f of 1 is 1. How about when x equals 2, what do I get? Well, y is 3. Okay, good. So, so far it works. The third term, let's see, I put in 3. Third term is going to be 5. That works. The fourth term is going to be 7. That's great. And the fifth term is, uh, whoops, something really huge, <laughs> which is actually this number. That's just because you can map and model just about anything, right, given enough, you know, terms of a polynomial. This is just being a little bit silly. We're not going to do this to you. Don't worry. <laughs> so let's actually generically write this here. Now, this right here is really important. I've put this because it's on your formula booklet. Uh, the nth term of an arithmetic sequence. I put it just how it looks. I think so it should look like this. The nth term is if we make it generic. You know, I call it like u1, u2, u3, u4. Well, in this case, if we want the nth term, it's written as the first term, u1, plus n minus 1 times d. This is the equation that you need. Okay, so this right here is what you need to do. This tells you any term. Get it? Any. 
so that's how this works. For example, in this particular one right here, let's characterize it by these two things here. We have u1, which is the first term. Well, that's going to be 2. Right, that's the first term. And d, the common difference. And a nice easy trick, here you go, is a pro tip for you. To find the common difference, if you're not sure, you can always just take any term and subtract from it the, for the term before it. So in other words, you can go uh, d, which is going to be 5 minus 2, right, which is uh, 3. You can make sure it works. If it's arithmetic, it better work for all of them. So 8 minus 5, is that also? Let's see what that gives you. Well, that also gives you 3. How about 11 minus 8? That also gives you 3. Okay, good. It's got a common difference. So see that? So I know that d equals 3. So with this variable and with this variable, I can characterize it, use that to find any term. I can find the 5,000th term. Just put in the first term, put in 5,000 minus 1 times d, which is 3, and away you go. You could find it. That's it. Let's do an example. So here we have, we want to find the 21st term for this one. So this right here is an arithmetic sequence. Now you're told it's arithmetic, which is good, but let's just double check to be sure it's a good idea because we need to know two things, don't we? In order to do this, let's maybe write this out again. So the nth term of an arithmetic sequence is u1 plus n minus 1 times d. So we just need to fill in those two variables. We need to know what's u1. Well, u1 is just the first term. We're given that. That's awesome. Right? The second term, u2, is this. This is u3. This is u4, and so on. All right, I got to figure out d. Well, d is going to be, let's see, minus 4 minus minus 7. Now, sometimes that looks a little bit sneaky like this. But that's the same thing as saying minus 4 plus 7. And minus 4 plus 7 is just 3. Right? So I'm adding 3 to it. Let's see if it works for the other one. So minus 1 minus minus 4, that'll also give you 3. 2 minus minus 1 is going to be 2 plus 1. That also gives you 3. So in this case here, I know then that u1 equals minus 7. I know that one. Whoops. I already found it. So I'll circle that. So that's going to be important. And I know that d equals 3. That's also going to be important. These two things now will characterize this. So watch carefully what I'm going to do now. If I want the 21st term, I write u, and instead of saying n, I put in 21. I want the 21st term in this list here. So what's that going to be? It's going to be the first term, which is just minus 7, uh, plus, and I want n minus 1. Well, 21 minus 1, I'll put in all that times 3. If I do that, let's see, now i got minus 7 plus, and 21 minus 1 is just 20, so that works. I'll do this all without a calculator, so let me see. So I have minus 7 uh, plus, let's see, 20 times 3 is the same as 2 times 3, which is 6, and just add a 0, so it's 60. And 60 minus 7 is 53. So I can conclude then that, therefore, u21 equals 53. There we go. I'm done. So this just shows you how you can find the 21st term. You can find any term, in fact. Let me actually add, uh, I want to show you a really cheap way to do it. Because if you used a calculator, of course, you could put it all in. Here's a really cheap way. I mean, if it's not too far away, you could have just found and kept going on this list. But can you see how that has its limitations? If you only want like the fifth or sixth or seventh term, fine, just continue it. If you want like the 5,000th term, that's uh, painful, and don't do that. But one way is, like I said, is, uh, let's just say I start off with the first number. I say enter. I'm going to just say plus 3, because that's my that's my rule, right? I go, whatever my answer was, I add 3 to it. So watch very carefully. Now I'm going to press Enter here. So I'm going to press Enter on my computer here. I'm going to say, boom, that's my second term, OK? So in my mind, I'm going to keep in mind, that's term number 2. If I press Enter again now, term number 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Do you notice the 21st term then was 53? Now that's really cheap, I know, but I mean, hey, this is just to show you that it's iterative, right? Every term, that's how you can figure it out. But you realize that's a bit long if you have to do like a lot of terms, but I mean, it's doable. All right, so why do you even, you know, why should you care? Well, there's patterns everywhere. This helps you to figure out patterns. Um, I saw this meme, my brother actually sent it to me and it was so brilliant. And this is actually an example of, uh, I mean, at least patterns are helpful. So I love this Fibonacci. Do you know what the Fibonacci sequence is? Have you ever heard of that? Let me show it to you, just in case you didn't know, because it'll actually explain this, which is brilliant. So the Fibonacci sequence. Now keep in mind, this one is not arithmetic, okay? It's not arithmetic. Watch, here's the list. 1, 1, then it goes 2, 
Watch it very carefully then. See if you can figure it out. Then it goes three, then it goes five, then it goes eight, and so on. Now the pattern, it's not adding the same number all the time because to get from one to one, you'd add zero. But if you add zero here, you don't get two. So it's not arithmetic. Do you notice that? This one here is not arithmetic. All right, so what do we do with this? Have you found the pattern yet? Maybe you've already learned it, I don't know. But um, this is not an obvious one. This pattern is uh, recursive. In other words, you actually have to take the last two numbers and add them up to get the third. So this one equals this plus this. So watch, one plus one gives you two. But that means then that if you want to find the next one, like if you want this term right here, well, you do one plus two, and that equals three. See that? And then two plus three equals five. Three plus five equals eight, and so on. Well, watch very carefully. Look at this one. This right here is a one. Maybe I'll write it uh, differently here. I think it's so really how they did this. This is a one, this is a one. Oops, actually the writing isn't really turning out very nice. Maybe I'll make it black. This is one, this is one. A well, one plus one equals two. Look, they made it in cheese. Look, it's twice as long. And one plus two, look, this is three units long. And two plus three equals five. Three plus five equals eight. Like, ah, oh, this is brilliant. So maybe you can celebrate learning about uh, arithmetic sequences by eating some Fibonacci cheese. See you in the next video. <laughs>